After years of preparation and training, athletes based around the world have come together to represent their nations in the heart of Southeast Asia. And as the horse flights landed, the sense of anticipation across the region has grown. At the magnificent Thai Polo Club grounds in Pattaya, Thailand, Asian athletes have the opportunity to represent their nations in the three Olympic disciplines of dressage, eventing and jumping at the first Asian Championships. Hello and welcome to the Thai Polo Club. We open up a new discipline today at these Asian Championships as we're going to take the dressage test for eventing. I'm John Kyle and alongside me, Bobby Haler. Bobby, we're looking forward to a third day of dressage, but something a little different. Yes, absolutely. And I'm really looking forward to seeing today. You know, it fascinates me that we have horses here that are, you know, having to do three disciplines. So they're going to have a slightly different confirmation. They're going to present the test differently simply because, you know, tomorrow they're galloping across a field going over jumps. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what, you know, how they present the tests. And the third member of our team getting the insight from the in gate is Sarah Rippon. Sarah, hello to you. Hi guys, yes, I am down here by the warm up for the third day. And yes, it's dressage, but this time it's the turn of the event ride. Catching up with them, but first let's hear who we've got to look forward to, John and Bobby. Yeah, we'll be back to Sarah as our competition progresses today. And it is a relatively cooler day with 29 degrees Celsius coming up on the Mercury. And uh, it's not quite that windy, though. 23 kilometers an hour is definitely still a breeze than that when you look at the trees. Patrick Lam, the Hong Kong Olympian from the sport of show jumping, is actually going to be our first in the ring. Wirpat Pitagonda for Thailand is going to lead off their challenge. Then it's back to Hong Kong. Hong Kong and Thailand here with teams Yushan Su for Hong Kong, uh, Prisha Kunjon, and Tufon Torabi, the individual rider for Iran, coming before the break. Then it's Tommy Heffernan Ho, uh, Minty Shavanot, who we've already seen in the dressage, Annie Ho, and Konotwat Samran for Thailand going at the end of the end, and uh, Konotwat, better known as Nut in the sport of eventing here in Thailand. So we have our first athlete just waiting for the starting signal from <coughs> our three-member jury here. Christian Landholt of Switzerland, an Olympic-level judge. Helen Christie of New Zealand, who we've seen judged to the very top level. And in fact, she's going to be the uh, chief steward for eventing at next year's Tokyo Olympic Games. And Austrian judge Christian Steiner with us as well. So on his center line to start his three days of competition, Patrick Lamb with jockey club Weronique. Patrick, an Olympian in the sport of show jumping in 2008 and a bronze medalist at the Asian Games in that sport as well. Last year, he went to the Asian Games in both eventing and jumping and rode this horse in the eventing championships and been competing in Europe with cross-country clears at the likes of the uh, big advanced level international events at Belton Park in Lincolnshire and Burnham Market in Norfolk. So far, John, it's been a really well presented test. It's nice to see how uphill the horse is and keeping that really good one two tempo that the judges will be looking for in the trot work. He's just finishing the leg yield there, where we're wanting the horse just to continue to step sideways. And it's really important when you're coming into the leg yield to really think about the preparation, especially on these horses where suppleness isn't always their forte, like we spoke earlier, because they've got two other disciplines to think about as well. The, the very interesting thing, though, of course, with the venting dressage, you mentioned yesterday, dressage is simply the French for training. And when it comes back to it, dressage is the basis of everything. And actually, a horse that can move and change within its pace and can stop and go, turn left and right, is one that's going to be able to do the same job for you out on the cross country or on the third day back in the show jumping. Absolutely. You know, dre dressage is the foundation of every discipline that we have here. So it's so important that they have that suppleness that you hear us talking about all the time. And sadly, you could just see there the lack of suppleness as he shortened his reins. That is an incredibly hard movement to do in an atmosphere like this, to suddenly ask your horse to stretch down and take the contact forward. So you, you are going to see ever so slightly a sort of disruption almost as they shorten their reins. And then we're coming into the collected walk into the extended. And this is also quite a difficult movement for them because they're having to really open up through the shoulder and ask for a little bit more freedom. But as we've discussed, naturally, these horses don't have that natural freedom through the shoulder. Just slight bit of tension there. You can just see him almost popping into trot. And that's where Patrick's sort of experience has come from to be quick enough to correct it. I think it's quite interesting that you said we're, you know, we're definitely going to see a different shape of horse. But the one 
very interesting thing about eventing is that there's no one shape in our sport. It's actually more about the horse's brain and willingness to do all these different things. Yes, definitely. And I think today we're going to see sometimes those sort of disruptions there in the walk and things because these horses are expecting to come in here and, and go jumping. And you can just see every now and then in the canter work how the horse is just swapping legs. So he's just not moving through the rib cage, And that fundamentally is the most important thing in dressage is having the adjustability through the horse's body and through the rib cage, And that is the key to, to everything. And the way this test has been written, it really shows if the horse and the rider as a combination are able to have the amount of suppleness, the engagement needed to be able to achieve this test. Oh, the Hong Kong eventers are trained by Nick Burton um, as a team coach for the dressage, who's again one of our very top level judges um, in this sport. Yes, and a brilliant trainer. And you can actually see, especially when people are being trained, athletes being trained by judges, how well they present their tests. When we look at Patrick here, he is not throwing a mark away. He is riding to every single marker. And that is really important because the movements are judged from one point to the next, not in the middle, not the, the marker afterwards, to what's stated on the test sheet. He's ridden two very, very well balanced counter counter half circles. We'll talk more about those half circles for our subsequent compen competitors and contenders. But Jockey Club Wera well, and Patrick Lamb opened up the Asian Championships Patrick here Lamb, in Pattaya Club and Lamb. the first to go yes, for the team for Hong for Kong. Dress yeah, really yeah, well ridden test and like I said I liked how accurate he was and how he presented there was a couple of bit of tension every now and then when he changed slightly behind in the canter and that's really difficult because you can see Patrick had that uphill frame which is incredi incredibly important to have up there but also to be having that engine from the hind leg coming through to keep the suppleness and that's just the next step now for the horse well Patrick is uh, going to be kind of the opposite of Mint Chavanot. Mint rode in the dressage and is riding in the eventing. Patrick is riding in the eventing and will start his show jumping competition tomorrow as well. Also a rider featuring in two of our championships here in Pattaya. So much to like in that test and you can see just how relaxed the horse was in the walk. There's just that moment of just bubbling over and, and as you say, I mean, a Grand Prix rider, they always tell me the most difficult thing to make your Grand Prix horse to do is just settle into the walk. You can imagine then for a horse that's bred yeah. to, to gallop and run at big solid jumps, it's, it's even more difficult. Absolutely, but I loved how quickly Patrick sorted that out. I mean, within three strides, he corrected it. And that could have been fundamental coming into the collected walk transition into the trot. So he did a brilliant job. So the judges will be uh, working out their scores in the two-star B test. Uh, at the eventing levels, we have two tests at each level, the A and B test. The B test used in the championship years, um, of which this is one. And the end of which, just um, as it is in pure dressage, we've taken away what we used to call the four collective marks, and, and now there's just one collective mark. And here in, in eventing, it's not just the rider, it's this overall impression of both athlete and horse um, for a mark out of 10 that has a doubling coefficient. So it, it's, it uh, increases the importance of that collective mark in relation to an individual movement. Um, and that will be what the judges are just finalizing in terms of their scores. Also in eventing, we're going to be getting scores in terms of penalties. So the scores are produced in the same way. They will be a percentage. So for instance, 60-65%. Uh, um, and then that is taken away from 100 to produce the penalty score. So a 65% would translate to a 35 penalty score. Then over the course of cross country and show jumping, they're hoping to add no further penalties to that. And it will be the lowest penalty at the end of the week that is our individual medalist. And when you're riding out there, it's important to think as well that you have still time around the outside of the arena, which classes as your warm up. And you still have those 45 seconds after the bell has gone as well. So you have to keep your horse listening. But also it's a great time to think mentally as a rider, do you have everything needed in your mind to start this test?
So we're Pat Bomb, as he's known, is going to be our next in the ring. The first for Thailand. The volunteers just walking away, having opened the arena, ready for the first Thai rider. So now Wirapat Pitakananda. Wirapat with Luminous had a very good result here in October. There's a lot of international eventing happens here at Pattaya at the Thai Polo Grounds. And actually this horse owned by Mr. Harold Link is a real driving force behind these championships. Wirapat Bomb, as he's known, individual silver medalist at the Asian Championships a few years ago. And this horse went with another Thai rider to the uh, all-important Olympic qualifier this year at Samur in France, where Thailand did pick up their qualification for Tokyo. So as we saw there, John, how uh, the rider went into rising trot across the diagonal on the medium, and they are allowed to do that. It states that in the in the test sheet and it just allows the horse to be able to come through the body a little bit more and it's a bit easier it's enabling them to be able to come out into the contact and have a bit more impulsion it's probably worth putting in context that this is two star now but we re we renumbered the stars at the beginning of this year because we've brought in a new introductory level that's really helping grow the sport of eventing um, below this so this was oh. what was formerly known as one star and now classed as two star that's a shame, he's uh, gone wrong. That's it. He just nearly, he thought he had to walk slightly yeah. earlier. And the difference is between this horse and the horse before is that when we talk about having a bit more expression and a bit more suppleness, this is where the horse before had a slightly easier elastic pace when you saw in the trot. And this one has a slightly quicker pace. So you'd want to be thinking about working on having him more supple and more active from behind. So we talk about that engine. And you can just see here in the, in the walk, in the extended walk, how the horse is being slightly fussy there in the head carriage. And it just explains that he hasn't quite got enough activity from the hind leg to push all that energy through the body, over his back, into that secure contact, enabling the rider to really push. And this is where all this is happening, sadly, in the walk. All that tension is slowly creeping in just because the rider doesn't have as much adjustability that's needed out there. And I thought he did a super job there going into the canter right as the horse did show the tension. And he's done a really good job here to maintain it in the medium canter. And he's going to want to be really careful now in coming into the counter canter that he keeps the body soft. Now, I've already spoken a bit about having the rib cage moving, but in the counter canter, it is absolutely crucial that you have the horse bending ever so slightly around the rider's right leg at this point, so that they're able to keep that left hind leg stepping through the body all the time. Okay, what's the point of counter canter? <laughs> Why are you cantering on the wrong leg? It's actually the beginnings of the flying change. So the horse has to be secure in the counter canter and be able to move their rib cage, be adjustable in the counter canter to be able to knock themselves off balance for a clean flying change. And obviously we know as the eventing gets higher, they have to add a flying change. So the basics are the foundation. We go back to having the suppleness, the impulsion, everything we need. That is also including the counter canter. They have to be able to canter in balance, in self-carriage on what you class as the wrong leg. And again, you know, being a foundation test, uh, that's very evident where on those long sides we're asking merely for an upward transition to medium canter because for a lot of horses that do, are at the two-star level in our sport, they are progressing upwards. So they'd be quite young horses and that's why the test is written to account for a young horse's scale of training and ability to display a level of movements. Yes, definitely. And you'll see that when they've put so many transitions within the test as well as. And that's just to help the rider and horse combination being able to take the weight behind and also help them with the test. But also it's important that the judges can see that they are able to produce the suppleness needed in the transition, the accuracy in the transition, and that whole general correct profile. We're about Pitakananda and Luminous for Thailand completing their test. I'd be disappointed to have had that error earlier on just before their serpentines and that will be uh, potentially a two-mark deduction. Well, it definitely will. The president, Christian Seven Landholt, rang the bell to, to indicate that he was uh, on course to go further wrong. 
You can just see there how the horse could do with being a little bit more over his back, taking the nose down and forward. And when we talk about adjustability, this is a perfect example here that when the rider asked for the horse to take a little bit more weight behind, the actual reaction of the horse was to come a bit higher in the contact, not coming up in the tummy. So the score for our very first to go, Patrick Lamb, leading off the challenge for Hong Kong. And Patrick's going to get a penalty score of 31.2. You can see there that total, that 68.8. That is his percentage score. And you can see the percentages for each of the judges, 72, 68, 65. So 68 percent, 31.2 penalties. And when we talk about the event horses and how their conformation is slightly different, and OK, they maybe don't have as much suppleness as we're expecting, especially when we look at what we've looked at previously this week with the dressage horses, you can see why he did get that score, just from the pure fact that the horse was more elastic than I think some of the horses we're going to see today. Mm -hmm. So we've seen two of our contenders so far, and for our two teams as well, Hong Kong and Thailand are our two teams here in Pattaya. We have an individual rider also for Iran. We're about to get the second team rider for Hong Kong in just a few moments' time. But uh, Patrick Lamb's 31.2 will be a very, very good start for the visitors here to Pattaya. And Thailand will be a little bit disappointed with the fact that uh, their number one man, Wirapat Bom, as he's known, has uh, picked up those penalties. So we'll be getting his score in just a short while. I think the judges' uh, marks coming in, but we will probably move on to our next rider. And whilst we're waiting for our next rider, John, just very quickly, you said yesterday a fantastic way to remember the letters around the outside of the arena. Well, I mean, there's lots of them, but my one for what I would call call the funny, funny letters, because I can never remember where RSVP go. Because we, That's we a song, right? Are you going to start yeah. singing a Beyonce but, song or whatever but, it is? But Because we, we all know the, the Pony Club short arena, the 20 by 40, which is all King Edward's horses can... Um, no, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on, John. The pressure's uh, on. Do the short arena with Blessed. All, <laughs> thank you. All King Edward horses carries many Blessed Falls. Right. <laughs> because I've, I now do long arenas so much, so it's all King Victor Emmanuel show horses can make really beautiful people fall. Very nicely done, John. Very nicely done. Well done. <laughs> So here is our second rider for Hong Kong, Yushuan Su, and All or Nothing. And uh, as we're going to have a couple of breaks, we've got a couple of stories for where we think those letters have come from. We've got loads of dressage facts for you today, me and Bobby. I love the fact how the panic happened then when I put you under pressure. Yeah, you were like, I, whoa! Whoa, I cannot remember <laughs> a 20 by 40 meter arena mnemonic. <laughs> That's it, I'm never working with you again. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get my own back these days, John. So the arena opens for Yushuan. Like a lot of these riders based in Europe now, based in the UK, and uh, the organizers here of the Asian Championships made a million dollar flight for European-based horses available to come to these championships. And Yushuan Su and All or Nothing are here to represent Hong Kong. They're actually no strangers to Pattaya. Yushuan was the individual bronze medalist at the Southeast Asian Games held here two years ago. So we're coming into the medium trot. And it's always risky when you decide to go rising in the medium trot, even though it is stated on the test sheet. Because if you pick to go rising at slightly the wrong timing, you can actually... Um, have the horse lose balance and pop into canter. So you've got to be so careful to make sure that you choose the right moment. And we're just coming into the leg yield to the left there. And actually the horse is falling through the outside shoulder, as you can see, with slightly too much right bend. So instead of crossing and moving the rib cage, he's instead falling through the shoulder. And that's where we say, you know, the suppleness, you've got to have the straightness. I know I may be asking you to speculate a little bit here because you won't be as familiar with the eventers, but do you think also that, that what you said about encouraging them to break into canter when you rise is a little bit to do with the fact that you try and be up out of the saddle cantering cross country? Absolutely. Anything where you suddenly tip your weight forward or lighten your seat means either canter or quicken the pace. If you sit back and add weight into the back of the saddle, it's naturally almost putting that braking feeling um, on the horse's back, so then they start to slow down. This is nicer now. Yeah, exactly. Good eye there, John. This is much better here. And you can see, when we talk about having the horse stretching, 
we want the horse to really stretch in front of the wither. We don't want to see any wrinkles left on the wither when we want the horse to stretch down. But once again, that transition to picking the reins up into that working trot is very difficult because if you don't have the mobility needed through the rib cage, you can't leg yield them slightly enough to pick up the reins and keep that activity without having such a big contact change. Uh, Yushuan, uh, so is actually actually based in the UK with um, my brother and sister-in-law, Mark and Tanya Kyle, um, in the Leicestershire Basin, owned by Howard Green. Howard has been out in Hong Kong for a very long time. He's had horses with uh, Mark and Tanya for a, a good few years and has actually commuted to ride eventing from Hong Kong um, over several years. Wow, well, he's doing a very good job with the walk there. The horse doesn't have the easiest walk and he's having to make it you know, look like four beat walk. And the horse doesn't have the tendency to do that. So he did a super job there riding the walk, actually quite slow. Well ridden into the canter transition to the right. Then we really want to power down in this medium canter towards the judges. You know, the judges are looking at the, the amount of power the horse has coming down the long side, but most importantly, the straightness. Is the horse straight coming down that long side towards the judges? So as a rider, when you come into the counter counter, you really want to make sure that your weight is to the right. So you, especially when you're on the counter counter this way, your weight must always be to the outside. So the horse continues stepping and lifting up that inside leg. Good transition there into the trot. This is also the youngest horse we've seen so far at just 10 years old. Well, he's doing an incredibly good job with all the transitions. They're looking a lot more balanced than what we've seen earlier here. And he's actually that bit bolder going into the, the medium canter. And what I love about it when I teach the eventers that I have at home, when you say a medium canter, okay, to an eventer, they kick and they go. When you say a medium canter to the dressage, it's like a working canter. You end up chasing them down alongside. It, it is great when you're watching the canter on the long side, see an extended canter, and the judges say the same. Sometimes you see an extended canter, you go, I cannot wait to see this horse across country. Yeah. And again, it just comes back to how dressage is the basis for getting it right in the other two tests. Absolutely. So Yushuan Su and All or Nothing completing his test here for Hong Kong. Actually, an interesting preparation for this combination. They recently traveled to Ireland to do the two-star long there at Ballandenisk. Exact same level as these championships and same cross-country designer. Ballandenisk is the home site of Peter Fell and the Fell family running eventing there since the late 70s. And Peter, the designer here at Pattaya for these championships. And that is really good planning, really good planning. And, and that goes into a lot when we see a horse coming out here today and doing a test they have spent so much time planning for that four minutes test you know for example like you said that he went to a competition uh, with the same as uh, the same designer with the cross-country jumps to have a feel of what he's going to experience out there this week I think because I, I do some very very slow running but I just run um, but I mean particularly after London 2012 triathlon in in Great Britain exploded and it's just like eventing people to train to a moderate level in three sports is just uh, it takes over your life and the and eventers are the same they're trying to be as good as possible in three sample. different disciplines absolutely and that is incredibly difficult because it's the, the horse has to be able to change its body and its way of moving or, you know within the three disciplines and it's incredibly difficult to do that especially keep them sane in the mind as well you know, for them to be able to do the jumping and, and the cross country, they've got to wake up mentally and be ready to fire off. And then we come into an arena, 20 by 60 arena, and all of a sudden they've got to be as relaxed as possible, supple through the body, making everything look almost easy and effortless. So it is a, an awful lot the eventers have to achieve. Very fluid as he returns forward into the trot as well. So he's you can just see there in the trot how relaxed the horse looks. Three and just there, how he collected the canter, the horse waited and stayed relaxed. So we've seen three of our nine in the eventing dressage here so far. And we have our second score for the tie rider, Wirapat Pikadananda, it in, and Luminous. It's 39 penalties, 61%. But as we know, for Wirapat, it was including an error, of course. So 39.0 and second place. 
I think it's always so unfair because um, it, it, it's so difficult to pick up the wrong end of that stick of error, of course. You go, oh, well, you know, Bobby Haler, she had an error, of course. Mm. Because it's Bobby, she always goes wrong. Not, no, she had an error on course. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And that is a shame with that test because, yes, he had the error on course, let's say that, but also a very expensive walk. And, and the walk is very difficult. If you lose marks in the walk, then it's really tricky because it is a lot of marks to gain. And also it can affect the movements after Shura, the walk, which slightly happened the out there today. So, Preacher Kunjan and showrunner are our next to go. This will uh, give us our second score for the Thai well. team. We have our individual rider Shura, there to bring us up to the break, the Iranian Tufan Turabi. And when I speak to a lot of the riders and I say to them, you know, what are you actually thinking when you're trotting around the outside? You've come into a fantastic venue that have given you an absolute brilliant surface to ride on. But what's really going through your mind? And they all just say that they're running through the test. They're always trying to remember, do I trap left or right when I get to the bottom? And just make sure that they, you can see here exactly he's having time to breathe. I think he's saluting there to his trainer, saying he's got this. But just having time to themselves and going through their mini goals that they achieve all of this as they come and run through the test. We're here just 10 days after the uh, the Princess Cup, one of the major eventing competitions here in Thailand, and it was run this year at the Royal Stable Unit, and Preacher rides for the Royal Stable Unit with this horse show run up. So a member of the Thai team that won bronze at last year's Asian Games in Jakarta, Preacha Kunjan and SnowRunner. Preacher rode at the first Asian Championships to be held when it was a single discipline event in just eventing here at Pattaya in 2013. And a winner here in Thailand of an event at this level with another horse last month. So a very well-mounted rider here in Thailand as well. And he's our first rider that st uh, stayed in sitting trot on that diagonal. And I think that was absolutely the correct choice with this horse. You know, this horse has a tendency to get slightly too long in the body. And just by staying in the sitting trot, he was able to use his seat to keep that active hind leg and keep that connected, condensed body shape. And then we're coming to the leg yield to the left. You know, in the leg yield, the judges are looking at the straightness on the center line, at the control of the shoulder, and that's really important because if you don't have the control of the shoulder, you then can't have the engagement of the hind legs and a good, clear tempo in the working trot. So there's quite a lot of things that you have to think about when really there's not a lot of space to achieve the leg yield in. And then we're coming round now to the stretching. So on the short side here, you really want to be thinking about getting your leg on and exactly what he's done there. Already saying right now, supple through the neck, come down. And also, again, they have the choice here to stay sitting or rising. And that's very much depending, I think, on your horse, that if something is, certain things can suddenly stress them out or something, that if you change your seat from going sitting to rising, it might be enough then just to knock their concentration. So it's always a decision that the rider would have made with the trainer before they come into the arena. And then we're coming into the collected walk, which is what we've talked about a lot, saying, it, you know, it is a very difficult movement to ride, especially for these powerful event horses where they have to suddenly be able to be relaxed and also they don't have the edge of the arena to help them. So the judges will be looking at the over track and that's where the horse's back feet land in the uh, front feet's footfalls. <laughs> it's quite a sentence to it get is. out, isn't uh, it? I usually get lost in the middle of that <laughs> sentence when I'm trying to explain it. And just in that extended walk, we would, I would like to have seen the horse have slight more activity in the hind leg to be able to keep that secure contact in front. But the rider did a very good job there to keep the horse's concentration as he came into the trot transition there at F. I was just going to say, because you could see the horse's ears absolutely pricked at something outside yeah, the arena. Yeah, uh, thinking, there the cross-country jumps. What are we doing? And you can see how he's riding this test incredibly careful. You know, he's really thought about how he's going to present this. He's not over pushing the horse. He's keeping the horse in the balance, which is incredibly important. So he's really just taking his time and presenting the horse in the frame that suits the horse and that the horse is capable of doing. 
And I think that's a lot of what the event riders have to think about when they come out here. They know they don't have the leg rows when they're out there, so they have to be very clever about how they present the test. They have to present the test in the way that the horse can do it and stay in a correct balance through the whole thing. Just unfortunately let the horse just drop down through that transition rather than having quite a crisp transition to that brief moment of trot. And that's just having that quickness, that engine behind to support. Once again here, the transition at K. And then coming into the counter canter. And if you have a horse that um, is quite sort of say croup high or not very strong behind, counter canter is a fantastic um, movement to use. It really is. It really makes the horse have to sit behind and take the weight behind and actually be in self-carriage. So I always find riding those half 20 meter circles in counter canter or simply a serpentine in counter canter really helps strengthen the quality of canter. Then coming into that last halt. And sadly, he's a little bit down in the contact there, but it was a very square halt. Incredibly square halt, actually, yeah. Preacher well, Kunjan and Snow Runner complete their test. Preacher who uh, normally, th I mean, throughout the summer, we've seen uh, Preacher riding in his military uniform, hence the salute he gave uh, Judge at Sea just before he started his test as a way of greeting the judges, especially when you've got a few minutes and your three judges around the ring. It's uh, quite often worth just, you know, giving them a little bit of a nod and a smile. Or a cheeky wink. <laughs> <laughs> the preacher Kunjan and uh, Snow Runner we will see, we might be back for the show jumping in his uniform. And I always love this, you know when you get a brilliant shot like that of the horse walking out really relaxed with his ears forward and just saying how content it is with life. And he's looking incredibly happy as well and I really think he should do because he wrote a really good job here and like I said when he was doing the test I was really impressed on how he maintained the horse to give the horse the best you know time in the environment as possible coming to the medium canter that's it much better frame there in the canter so, going back up the order to Yushan Su and all or nothing for their score, Patrick Lam of Hong Kong is our leader on 31.2 and this is another very good score for Hong Kong, 33.1 or for 66.9 for Yushuan. So that's going to put uh, Wirapat Pitakananda down into third place for Thailand at the moment and giving uh, Hong Kong the driving seat so far. We're about to get our next Thai score from Preacher Kun Jan. Very much a well presented test here when you look at it back and you get to re watch, you know, what we were talking about. Tufan Tarabi is uh, lining up here. Tufan, the 33 year old Iranian rider, actually uh, here in Thailand a lot, riding the Royal Stable Units uh, Sawang for the championships here. taking his time again around the outside the arena, making sure that he's doing everything that he planned to do. And sometimes it's very interesting, actually, to see how the riders, what they do around the outside of the arena. Tufan Tarabi and Sawang, our individual contender for Iran. Tufan rode in the Asian Championships here in 2017. He was a winner of a two-star level competition here last December, has been second in the Princess Cup, and is therefore as you could gather, a regular competitor at Pattaya. Now, a good start to the medium trot. He started at the marker as he powered off across the diagonal there. You know, they want to see a development of the lengthening of the frame and within the stride, and they want to see a really good sort of transition back as well. Coming into the leg guild. You know, thinking the whole time about the suppleness, the balance, and the sideways steps. 
And it's so important about corners. You know, if you're not riding the corner enough, you're not going to get the center line. If you don't get the center line, all of a sudden, the leg yield comes up very fast. So you always have to think about your preparation out there. I'd like to have seen a, you know, a little bit more suppleness there in the leg yield to the right. It wasn't as good as the leg yield to the left, but you know, horses are left-handed or right-handed. They do have the sides that they find a little bit harder. And when you see the horse stretched down, you really want to see behind the saddle really swinging and looking supple. And what I really liked there, that was incredibly clever riding. He went sitting trot before he shortened his reins. So he was able to condense the horse with his seat and leg before he had to suddenly ask for a more uphill balance. And therefore it was a lot more fluent. It isn't easy as well going from that stretching down in the trot then into a collected walk because you don't have the horse as together as you would like them to then have to go into quite a collected walk. Good steps in the extended walk. And that's much better. You could see from the beginning, it was a little bit sort of unsteady. And then towards the end, you can see him relaxing into the contact. And he's just ever so slightly riding shoulder four there, just to keep the horse nice and steady, because I think he knew he was really predicting that canter transition. And you want them to power down alongside here in the medium canter. And then use their seat and their stomach muscles to bring the horse's six pack up. And we talk a lot about having engagement behind, especially in the canter work here coming into the counter canter. But unless the horse is using their six pack, they, they can't have that engagement. They need to have their back up and their tummy strong. So they're lifting up through into that forward contact. Well balanced there on the half 20 meter circle. You can really see the horse now starting to relax into the test. And then that was a much better counter transition there. And you can see as well how the rider is slowly getting a lot bolder out there because he can feel the horse relaxing. He'll be looking at his point to where he needs to hit now. And I don't know if you can see there, John, but can you see the red tape just in front of every marker? And it's always really good as a rider when you're out in the arena to ride to the red tape, not the marker yeah. itself, because sometimes it just knocks you off the correct line. Yeah, a good activity there in the trot. And that was something as well, that how the trot, the quality of trot got a lot better after the canter work. It's just a shame there that he stepped out with that left hind leg into the halt. So, Sawang and Tufan Tarabi for Iran, our sole individual rider, every other rider here being for a national team in these Asian Championships. He brings us up to the judging break, and again, another quality test here at the event of two-star level for these Asian Championships. 31.2 leads for Hong Kong's Patrick Lam. We'll see where Tufan is going to go on the board, and we have to catch up with the score also for Bridget Kunja. But before that, we'll get some highlights of Tufan Tarabi's test here with Sawang. Of course, owned by the uh, Thai Royal Stable Unit. And that starts tomorrow at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. start time tomorrow for cross country. Here come the replays there. Just coming into the walk. And you can see how straight, you know, that was a great shot there to see how straight the horse was in that extended walk. Really lovely shoulder movement there through into the canter. Yeah, that was a really well presented test. I'm really looking forward to actually seeing what his score is going to be. Well, in uh, terms of scores, we have the one for Preacher Kunjan and a snow runner, and it's 34.2 and third position. So that becomes the best of the Thai riders so far. Just about 1.1 penalties behind Yushuan Su in second for Hong Kong. Patrick Lam is our leader on 31.2. And I think that's a really good score. I think, you know, he went out there actually for a 65. The way he rode the test and maintained the test and helped the horse in every way. So that's how the top three looks at this stage.
So going into the judging break, of course, we don't have the uh, score to hand at this moment for Tufan Tarabi, but here are the four well, scores we do have. Patrick Lam, Yushuan Su, Plicha and uh, Wirapat Bom Pitakananda. And those are the first two riders each for the Hong Kong and Thai teams will get the second two riders for each of those teams after the judging break. And the next horse and rider combination in the ring in just over 10 minutes at 10 to the hour. But stay with us. We've got quite a bit of content for you between then and now. Eventing isn't a very big sport in Asia, so it's developing here. So there's quite a bit to get everything set up, everything together. It's, it's a set standard, it's a two-star competition, so we've set height. The maximum height is one meter 10, the maximum top spread is one meter 40. The distances we're allowed to go with is between 3,640 meters and the 4,200 meters, somewhere around there. So it's between seven and nine minutes. Every time a horse jumps the fence, it's an effort. On the track here, we've 24 fences. We've got 30 efforts because we've got some A's and B's out there, so there's, there's multiple questions at each fence. The first real question is fence 5AB, uh, which is just above clubhouse number three, and that's through a keyhole fence. So you sort of build up those questions along until you get to the, the meat of the course. The water jump down below at fence number 12, leads to 13, 14AB is quite a strong question for them. And um, then they go the water jump again for the second time. It's a story that you want to see. Can they answer the questions? Can they meet the requirements? We use quite a few, there were quite a few fences here already, which is a great advantage to have. So you're not building a completely new track. There's so many variables in how the horses read the fences. Um, it makes it, it's quite, is it a science, is it an art? It's sort of a mixture between. It's fantastic, absolutely brilliant. The facilities are fantastic, the welcome is brilliant. It's going to help grow the sport in Asia and that's very, very important because it's now is the time for Asia to flourish in equestrian sports. We've got the Olympic Games in Tokyo, which is just fantastic. So now is the absolute time. So some words there from Peter Fell, the championship designer here in Pattaya for 2019, putting together the course out here in the beautiful Thai polo grounds. And one of the riders who's going to take it on over the course of the uh, three days of competition in the eventing is with Sarah Rippon. Sarah. Hi, yeah, well, I'm delighted to be joined by Yu Juan Su, Hong Kong, China. We'll just have a quick chat about your test. Are you happy with what happened out there? Yeah, yeah, no, super. I'm really happy with how he went. Um, you know, we've only been together for just under a year now and had a broken leg at the start of the year, so not the ideal season. But no, really happy with how he went. And I just tried to ride as accurately as I could and show off his movements a bit. And no, I'm happy with how it went out there. And now you've done your dressage. The next test is the cross country. Any thoughts on that right now? Yeah, uh, we've walked it a couple of times. I'll walk it a few more times before the actual cross country. But no, I think uh, Peter Fell did an amazing job designing and building. Um, made the most of going around the polo field and using all the space we have and of course the clubhouse and just beautiful track. And I think quite a few questions that might catch a few people out or test us, um, but everything's fair in front of you. So looking forward to tomorrow. Well, best of luck. Well done today. And back to the comms. Thanks, Ripper. Well, uh, we are hearing there from Yushan Su, who currently sits in second place. And in terms of the teams, Hong Kong are out in front after two riders, 64.3 and Thailand, 73.2. But really, we get a feel for those best three out of the four scores to count in terms of the team list. So when we see our next riders, we'll know exactly the situation between the two teams. And then it's down to the final riders to maybe try and make the difference. Well, we've seen five of our nine two-team riders and the individual rider for Iran. Let's have a recap of what's happened so far.
Welcome back. We're at the Thai Polo Club in Pattaya for the eventing championships, part of the three discipline FEI Asian Championships for 2019. The first time three championships have been run together like this. I'm John Carter, alongside me, Bobby Hader. Bobby, we've been enjoying the first half of the eventing dressage so far. And uh, we've got these four riders to come, two for Hong Kong, two for Thailand. Uh, Mint Shavanot there with Saar of her dreams. Mint already a gold medalist this week. That was in the dressage. We've got Annie Ho and Thomas Heffernan Ho with uh, their horses for Hong Kong. And then uh, Kontawat Samaran and Redano Elmi for Thailand, who will wrap up the competition. Thailand just behind Hong Kong at the moment in the team standings. Um, but Bobby, just looking down at this sand school, I mean, for, for Aventus, this is a relatively modern introduction. We are so used to doing our dressage on grass, and indeed at Babington Burley still do. But I mean, a sand school like this, excellent for championships, and, and you guys in pure dressage have been on, the, on them for years. Yes, absolutely, John. It is absolutely crucial that you have the right surface for the horse to perform the way that we need them to. And, you know, they have done a fantastic job here, making sure that they have the correct people to come in and the surface is the possibly best that they can give the horses. Even when we look here at the, into the warm-up, it is the same surface as well. And, and that's always something to think about when you're um, coming into a competition. If the surface is slightly different in the warm-up than what it is into the main arena, the horse could naturally change how they feel underneath you. And that can be quite a nerve-wracking feeling if you weren't expecting it. That's why it's brilliant they do these are re arena f uh, familiarizations. So it gives us a chance as riders to be able to go from the warm up, how feel how the horse goes from the warm up and then into the main arena and to get into an arena like this has been so beautifully decorated out there. They've put in a uh, super job of uh, presenting the arena that we'll be seeing most of. This is where our show jumping is as well. But just out in the background of that shot, we've got the polo field as well. And about a third of the cross country courses out there on the polo field. Here is the score for Tufan Tarabi from Iran, 33.1. And our Iranian individual goes onto the leaderboard in second place. So it will split up the uh, riders from uh, Hong Kong. Patrick Lam will stay our leader. Yushuan Su will go down to second place. I always love this shot here, you know, when you get to watch them walk in and you can just suddenly see on their face how they're really feeling and thinking, oh dear, here we go, this is it. Yeah, you've got the grooms there and it's so fundamental that you have that great home team that you need. And, and we always forget to slightly talk about them, don't we? About the grooms and the sponsors and the trainers and you know, the family that always support every athlete to be able to be at a competition well, like this. Just continuing his schooling there, going around the outside of the arena. And really, you can do almost anything around the outside of the arena. We've seen some riders come in and stay in rising trot for a while, just to keep the horse easy through the back and soft through the back. And we've seen some riders come in and straight away do some walk trot transitions. And I mean, I think it's depending on what the rider feels comfortable as well. They certainly aren't going to do something around the outside of the arena that they don't feel comfortable with to give themselves doubts before they come down that center line. It very much will be something that's a confident builder for the partnership and something that the rider knows the horse will relax to and start to breathe in an environment like this. So Thomas Heffern and Ho is going to get us back on the way. Jockey Club Charlene just taking a little bit of a spook there. Going down the long side, the arena is actually going right outside. You can see there the double of fences that will come late on the cross country tomorrow. There's actually the uh, penultimate fence on course before they gallop back out of the polo field to conclude their cross country. So third rider for the team for Hong Kong, Thomas Heffern and Ho with Jockey Club Charlene. And the suffix there meaning that this is one from the Oldenburger stud book owned by the Hong Kong Jockey Club who do a tremendous amount in supporting now as well, of course, as racing uh, the uh, sport horse industry in Hong Kong. Tommy was uh, a bronze medalist at the Asian Games back in 2014. He's been had some very good results at Burnham Market and Chatsworth and Samuel with this horse. It was originally produced by former world champion Sandra Aufath and Thomas as well in uh, looking forward to those next steps, those World Championships Olympic Games. He was recently just outside the top 10 at the upper level event at Stregom in Poland. And he started really well here, John, in the test. A very good first centre line. And that's really important, that first centre line, because that's the first time the judges really get to look at you. And you really want to enter for that 10. 
coming into the leg yield to the right. Thinking about the body bend, that banana shape that we're looking for around the rider's inside leg. And I like how this horse has a good frame. You know, he's coming from the hind leg into an uphill uh, positioning in the head carriage. And then we're coming into allowing the horse to stretch down. And I'd just like to see him take the contact forward. Yes, you can see that he's dropped down from the rein length, but he's not actually carrying his nose forward and taking the contact out in front of him. Then coming into the walk transition. I will just say that that 33.1 that Tufan got is exactly the same score as Yushuan. So that is actually equal second for those two riders at the moment. And he's going to have to be really careful here in the extended walk because the horse is quite inconsistent in the car head carriage. You can just see there how he's almost sort of with his head pushing the reins out of the rider's hands. So he's going to have to be very careful that he doesn't allow the walk to get too big in front. The horse must look like one horse coming across a diagonal and uh, not two. And definitely the walk is not th this horse's strongest point. And that's quite common. You're not, you know, it's very rare to find a horse that has, you know, each pace for a 10. They're always going to have a weaker pace. And we can see that with this horse, it is the walk. And that's something as a rider, you just have to manage and think about improving at home in training. It is not something you're going to fix out there in the arena. But I mean, and I've also heard the likes of Charlotte Dujardin and Isabel Verth saying when they're first looking at a horse, what paces do they look at? They say you've got to look at the walk and canter because there's very little you can do about them. The trot actually is am amazingly malleable. Yeah, it's two beat. It's a lot easier to correct. You know, if they've got a super walk and a super canter, you can always produce the trot. And when you hear a rider say, oh, don't worry, I can produce the trot, it just means that it's, a, it's quite easy almost to add height and expression into a trot, a lot more than what it is into the walk and canter. They are the base. You know, the walk and canter is, is very similar and, and they are the base of the, the horse's movement and very difficult to really change. We can make the horse stronger and we can strengthen them within that pace, but it's very difficult to change a mechanical way of cantering. And that's one thing about these event horses is that you've got to think of how their mechanics are. How does their body move mechanically sometimes that maybe they can't be supple, but you know what, they're the best cross country horse that you've seen. It, it's just how they're put together sometimes. And it's very difficult to have all of that for each discipline. So I think we can discuss that they've been working on flying changes mm. at home for the next level, which is what you mentioned earlier, that he's got bigger sights. He wants to go up through the levels. And they would have been teaching this horse the flying change from the counter canter and most probably a counter canter 20 meter circle. Yeah. So of course the horse was already one step ahead of the rider thinking, oh, you wanted a change. I mean, we say about the dressage horse as being clever and learning the test, but you really do need a clever eventing horse because Coming when you're out the there on the cross country, you want it to be, be helpful, ready to step in and try and answer the question on your behalf while you're busy doing something else. Jockey Club Charlene and Thomas Heffern and Ho, disappointment for them with the last couple of movements. They're not quite going to plan, but a uh, well-produced test for that horse and rider combination. And of course, eventing it's the all-round test it's the same horse and rider combination that will do dressage that will do cross country and will come back on the final day and show jump yeah absolutely and yes okay he is going to be gutted with that test we all saw the mistakes but when you think about where they want to go in the future and how the horse is a future prospect it's again like we discussed yesterday in the dressage straight when the riders were asking for the two time changes and actually they were getting one times is the equivalent today where he didn't want the flying change but the horse is already thinking about it it's being quick on his feet and that is important to take him through to the next level Really good canter there, a nice uphill frame. And we could always say, yes, we'd like them to, be up more, uh, to come up more in the back and more active behind. Yeah, he was one step ahead thinking that flying chain should be there. I think, uh, you know, eventing trades a lot on its, its military background. Indeed, was known for many years on the continent as military because it, the idea is that it's, it's the, the courier 
a horse that would have the steadiness on parade from the dressage, the ability to gallop cross country to deliver a message, and then the ability after that exertion to come out and have an accuracy and confidence question of the show jumping, as in, can it do it all over again? But you were saying there's, there's some, some real historic cavalry background to some of the Grand Prix dressage level. Yes, definitely. And I will uh, give my dad the full credit to what I'm just about to say, as he likes to uh, tell me many times. But when we talk about the Piaf in the Grand Prix, you know, they used to use the Piaf, the horse, you know, jo jogging up and down on the step to keep the horse warm. And that was really important when they were on a really long lineup and they could be stood there for hours that they would suddenly get cold. So then they would ask for the Piaf. And also we have the Cantaprouette. They would use a quick Cantaprouette to turn and gallop off in the opposite direction. And of course, then the flying change there is to quickly change leg in when they had to go to a new direction quite quickly. So it's really historical, like you were saying, John, when we talk about the dressage, but also how important it is to being the foundation of every single discipline. And this is what I love about the eventing overall. It shows you how important the dressage is in each step that they take. Well, I want to see you riding pure dressage then in camouflage cream. I'm on it. I'm ready. You're, you're I've got okay. it. <laughs> pure dressage is that wary. I want to see it. <laughs> And it's, it's Aranatha Chavanot is our next to go. Aranatha Mint, as she's known, with Tsar of her dreams, has already been a medalist this week. She was riding on the uh, Pure Dressage team for Thailand. And uh, very likely to be a medalist again with the Thai team here in the eventing. But can she make her way onto the individual podium by the end of the three days of competition in the eventing as well? It was very interesting watching Mint come in there, how she has the confidence within the dressage already, like you discussed, doing the, the pre-St. George and the Inter 1 the last two days. She came in within, you know, in shoulder in. Straight away, she entered the arena to make sure that the horse is wrapped around her inside leg and she has complete control that he's listening to her so she doesn't lose that slight bit of co um, concentration from him. And we've discussed quite a lot about how they come around the outside of the arena. Mint's just gone for a nice little leisurely walk there, taking a breather, letting the horse relax on a slightly longer rein, just to keep the relaxation as she heads down the centre line. So now, as an eventer this time for Thailand, Aranatha Chavanant. <coughs> Aranatha, a gold medalist with the Thai team earlier this week in the pure dressage and had a very good result in the individual intermediate yesterday. Very nice frame coming down the centre line. And you can see how Mint leg yield through the corner there to keep the bend around her inside leg. Riding czar of her dreams, Harold Link's horse from here in the uh, Thai Equestrian Federation. Mint has been a winner here in Pattaya just uh, last month. And uh, Mint rode on the Asian Games team last year for Thailand picking up a Team bronze. Very nice preparation and suppleness in the leg yield. And a really good tempo in the trot. You can clearly see a clear two beat, one, two, one, two, as she's going into every movement. And in good preparations in the leg yield to the right towards V. And what you know I like here is you can see the horse you know, is very, very connected. You can see they're condensed, good active hind leg. And because of that active hind leg, look how easy it is for the horse here to take the contact down, almost slightly too much as she's going into the stretching here. And how far is too much? If the horse is still down and in the contact, because you're looking for it to reach down and in the contact, if it's still maintaining the contact, is there still a point at which the judges go, it's too much? It just depends. Uh, there, the horse looked like he was pulling her down. It, that's a little bit different. Right. He's not holding his tummy muscles. He's not actually in self-carriage. He's being a bit too strong and pulling her down instead of lightly taking the contact down and, and holding that six-pack. She's being very clever there, not over-collecting the walk and making sure that she has quite a long frame. So it isn't such a big difference from that collected walk going into the extended walk. Very nice walk there. I mean, look at that relaxation, how easy that looks. You have no fear there that the horse is going to pop into trot in that extended walk. She's gone slightly shoulder forward there, using her inside leg to push the tummy to the left so that he was wrapped around her inside leg enough to be able to achieve that trot transition. Oh, 
What a shame. Oh, how gutting because she did so well to prepare for that. But if anyone is able to put one duff moment behind them and just get on to the next movement, it is you know a pure dressage rider at this stage. Yes, definitely. And we've seen that already from Mint, that she can forget what's happened and move on to the next. Lovely frame there. Coming into the counter canter. So far, so good. Looking secure. Looks very easy. A clear three beat. Nice transition down into the trot. And the frame stayed uphill. Then Mint is another rider who we've seen over riding to the four-star level, so two above this in Europe, and that is the level of Olympic qualification as well. So having qualified their nation at Samur, the riders now need to go and be qualified to the level of the Olympic Games following that as individuals so that they can be selected for that national federation place. And Mint was very careful how she rode that second can transition there. And if you watch very carefully, you can see how she rides to every letter but how she sets up. There is a beginning, middle, and end to every movement that she rides. And that comes down to how the test is presented to get those extra marks. Yep. Lovely transition there into the trot, lovely frame. And it's nice to see how this horse is supple and, and moving well through the body. Very nice halt. Yeah, very good job from the rider. Aranatha Shabanov and Tsar of her dreams for Thailand, the third Thai team rider. And uh, with potentially some of their best address our scores still to come, the uh, battle between Thailand and Hong Kong for gold medal position going into day two is far from over. There was about uh, nine points in it after two riders, but uh, I think it's going to get a lot closer by the end of dressage, of course, when you have a pure dressage rider coming in as the number three. And interesting, because the chef keeps they would normally tactically put the order of the team riders um, for a particular reason. The cross-country specialist who may not be the dressage specialist at all, number one, to go out and give feedback on the course. Sometimes you protect a rider, and I'm not surprised to see Mint here, the pure dressage rider, as number three. Um, because she could come in and she could kind of wow in the number three spot. And the number four spots are usually your most reliable all around, but often also they're most reliable because they've got such strong dressage basis. Absolutely, and it is, that is such a shame there how the horse reacted. But replying to what you said there, John, it's a lot of pressure to come in fourth place, especially if you know you have to get a certain score. And I think by placing Mint in third place, it gives her a breather. She knows there's another rider to go, and it, she can just focus on producing that test needed. And apart from that mistake there, you can just see how well presented the trot work is, the frame is up there, and it's a really lovely profile. So, the third rider for Hong Kong, we've already seen, that was Thomas Heffern and Ho with Jockey Club Charlene immediately after the break, and we have uh, Tommy's score to hand now. So, Thomas Heffern and Ho and Jockey Club Charlene are going to score 37.3, that's individually fifth, and it's going to put uh, Hong Kong after three riders on a score of 101.6. Really lovely crossing there in the leg heel to the left. Yeah, and it's just a shame a couple of things that this rider had, this combination. Such a shame about that flying change that tried to pop in there, isn't it? And here's uh, the final rider for Hong Kong, Annie Ho. They have an athlete score coming in Annie Dawn. Annie with a horse that was originally produced by J.P. Sheffield in Great Britain. Lost in translation. Lost this one by the Irish side, Garib, owned and ridden by Annie Ho. And the judges won't be paying that much attention, will they, John, as, as the riders are coming around the outside the ring. They're still finishing doing the test sheets from the rider before and thinking other thoughts, really, than actually what's happening then and there. Doing those transitions around the outside of the arena. And transitions are a fantastic way of keeping the horse active and supple through the body. And there's something that I really recommend as well to help you move up through the levels. Because when we think about the Grand Prix or the high eventing tests, 
everything is to do with transitions. The whole entire test is built around them. So the more secure he, you can get the transitions and the development in and out of them, the better the overall is. So our penultimate combination of the day, day one of three in the eventing, of course, is going to be another and the third team rider for Hong Kong. Annie Ho, Annie with Lost in Translation. Annie, who was the individual gold medalist at the Asian Championships here in 2013 in Pattaya, riding the horse that recently gave her a podium finish at this level at Ballandenisk in Ireland. Annie has ridden at three Asian Games, including taking a team bronze with Hong Kong in 2014. Now, this horse is a different horse altogether as well from what we saw from the horse before. He isn't quite as supple. He doesn't find the trot as easy. So the rider just has to make sure that he she maintains this same tempo through the whole entire trot work and doesn't rush him forward to try and, you know, in put in more action in front. Yeah, good tempo there. Well ridden leg yield. You can just see how she's getting the bend through the body. D differentiate those for us, leg yield to half pass. Okay, so leg yield is when they're looking the opposite direction to the way you're going. And then half pass is where the horse is looking in the direction that you're going. So the horse really has to be bent around the rider's inside leg when we talk about the half pass. And, and is one a preparatory for the other or actually do they come from a different training route? No, not at all. You, you would teach the leg yield before the half pass. They have to be able to go sideways away from the rider's leg and be mobile through the body, through their body, and being able to just find themselves, find themselves going sideways before you then start adding that bend in the direction that you're going, because they have to take more weight behind. They have to have the strength. And leg yield is a really fantastic you know, exercise to use when you want to develop a trot or open the horse's frame up in front because they really have to open up in the chest to achieve the leg yield. So it's something within the dressage or within any discipline is really strongly used. Yeah, really good frame there in the walk. I would like to see a bit more activity. He's very, very relaxed there. But at the same time, I think she's been quite clever in keeping him that way. So there's no fear of any jogging coming in. Then you think about shortening your reins and picking the horse up. And it's so important that you use both legs when you shorten your reins, but also shorten your outside rein first when you come from that extended walk, because it just means you have control of that outside shoulder and you don't overbend them to the inside. Just came up slightly there in the contact, which is a shame. But then that's that activity that we were speaking about in that hind leg to have that energy jumping through the body, keeping that suppleness. Then coming into the counter canter. And yes, absolutely, she achieved the counter canter and she kept the frame, but there wasn't that sort of easy movement, that flowing through the horse's body that you really would like to see. Good preparation coming into the canter left. And the horse finds the left canter easier. He's more supple around the rider's left leg. And you can see as well there how much steadier he was going into that medium canter, because obviously he finds the left canter easier. He was able to stay active on that outside hind leg. Everything here is much better. He's much more supple in the left counter canter. And you can see how much more fluent that was as the rider hit the marker at R. And once again here, the canter has actually helped the horse's trot work. And, and you find that a lot. If, if you have a horse that doesn't find trot very easy, then I would start off in the canter. Use the canter to make the horse that bit more supple and free in the trot work. So, Annie Ho and lost in translation for Hong Kong. That is the final team rider for Hong Kong as well. So we will know their final team score shortly as well. After three riders on 101.6, and we're about to get the third rider's score for Thailand as well.
Yeah, she rode that test really well. Just a couple of things to do with having that bit more suppleness through the body, having the horse, you know, like a gymnast that you'd watch, uh, just making everything look a bit easier. But, you know, there was no real major mistakes out there. So I think she'll be very pleased that she's got that clear round out the way, over and done, and then she can get into the fun stuff now with the show jumping in the cross country. Yeah, and after, you know, Thomas Heffern and Ho there, in that number three slot, so again, doing what you kind of expect, he, he had the potential to be very, very good. And because his horse has been prepared for the levels above, that ended up being quite big errors at this level. So 37.3, and they're hoping now, with bringing Annie Ho in last, that that can be their discard score, and they can start on a very strong base, maybe be on a three-member team score of under 100 going right, into cross-country, which would be impressive. Yeah, incredibly impressive. And when we talk about these horses and they have to do three disciplines, they are going to excel at one of them. You know, it's very it's very hard, almost impossible for them to be amazing at every single one of them, from the dressage to the eventing, uh, to the cross-country, sorry, and the show jumping. But they will all have their part to play within the team. So, score for Arundhati Chavanon and Tsar of her dreams. And this is what you want from your number three rider. This is 31.8, good enough for second place, pushing Yushuan Su and Tufan Torabi down a place in the order to equal third. And Arundhati's score now will put Thailand on 105, with potentially another very strong score to come from uh, Kontawat Samran, their last rider, who's next in the ring. That's a really big shame about the canned transition she had, because that would have been a 70% that she would have had, which is a shame. And there is the uh, final team rider, Kontawat Samran. Kontawat Nut, as he's known. And here we go. Let's Just making sure that he's hydrated as well. And of course, we haven't really, well, we did at the beginning mention the heat, but it is incredibly warm out there. We're lucky to have a slight breeze today, so it's a little bit easier for the riders, but they've done a fantastic job here at the, at the show when I've spoken to the stewards, and they said that in every stable, the horses have two fans and there's water everywhere for the riders. So they're looking after both of them as a combination. That last final time to breathe and get your thoughts together together as you enter the arena. Hello. Good evening. Samran. And Ridano Elmi are going to be our next and last to go. Horse owned by the Thai Equestrian Federation, Nunati Tana and uh, Chanikam Shurukening. And again, we've seen uh, Nunati Tana, Vice President of the Thai Equestrian Federation, with us here this week, involved in some of the medal ceremonies with the Thai Equestrian Federation's considerable support to bringing these championships here to Pattaya. Very nice frame there in the canter work. He's going around the outside of the arena. And it was nice to see how he used sort of a leg yield half pass to move the horse away from one leg to the other before he enters the center line. Giving himself a really wide space as well to make sure that he's incredibly straight coming down towards the judge at sea. So another dual purpose rider contested the Southeast Asian Games as a show jumper, Konotwat Samran. Conotard was uh, part of the Thai team that secured Olympic qualification at Samur in France earlier on this year, and fifth in a recent top-level event, international advanced four-star at Monte Libretti in Italy. Yeah, good balance coming through the corner and then starting the medium trot keeping a really good frame. And you can see how he developed the stride as he went across the diagonal. Nice positioning in the leg yield to the left. And then coming again. And you could just see there as he turned down the center line at the sea, he didn't quite have the rib cage out the way of his right leg. So the horse sort of came around slightly in the wrong bend. Good tempo. Really good two beat in the trot. 
And it really depends on, on the rider to, to make the decision if they want to go sitting or rising when they do this movement or stretching on the two loop serpentine. I always think it's quite good to go rising, John, because it just enables the horse to really come through the saddle and over their back to take the contact more forward. Take your word for it. Well, there you go. Very nice positioning there, coming into the walk transition. And it's really important that you walk at sea as the judge is directly at the, the marker. And the medium walk is CHS. And then going into the extended walk towards P. And this is when you want to think about shortening your outside rein first as well, just to make sure you've got control of the outside shoulder, which you can see he did there. Getting ready for the trot transition that we have here at F. Good frame. Yeah, he did a super job there. As he picked up the reins to go into the trot transition, the horses actually went quarters in. So it was borderline that he could have striked off on the wrong leg. So it was really good that he waited for that canned transition. Good transition back at H. And that's one whole mark when we look at that medium can to injure the transition. So it's so important that you show the judges the moment you start to when you're finishing. So we look at the quality of the canter on the half 20 meter circle. Is the horse in good self carriage? Does it have good balance? Yeah, and, and just tell me a little bit about self carriage because uh, I mean, Clearly, if you, if you draw a, a vertical line down the front of this horse's face, this horse is therefore, that's how you tell it. It's behind the vertical. So for, from the rider's point of view, what are they trying to do to get it back up onto the vertical and into more self-carriage of the head and neck? Yeah, it has to come from the rider's lower leg. You know, so many people try and fix it from the hand, and that, and that doesn't work. They just come back even more at you. You must think of pushing more lower leg on and really pushing your bottom into the saddle and pushing their nose out in front of them. But once again, it comes through with that word that I keep using is, is suppleness. You, they cannot have self-carriage unless they have an active hind leg and suppleness through the body. Well presented half 20 meter circle. And there again, John, you can see that ideally you want the hind legs to go into trot first before they fall onto the front legs. And that's just where he has that lack of self-carriage, not quite using that six pack that he needs. So our final rider of the day, according to what Samaran and Ridano Elmi bring our eventing dressage to its conclusion and also the tie team challenge on day one. They carry these scores forward. It is the same horse and rider combination that will go cross country, that will show jump on the final day on these penalty scores. But they want to get off to the best possible start today. And uh, in a moment, we'll have the score also for final Hong Kong rider Annie Ho. Then we'll get... Uh, Contouart's uh, score before we're we able to look at the results for both individual and team on day one of the three days of competition in the event. You can see here in the trot and how well he looked on the horse, how well the picture looked was really nice as well. And he presented the test really well. He did a really good job there. And, and I think he will be really, really pleased with that. Interesting also that of our nine, we started and ended with championship medalists from the sport of show jumping turning their hand to uh, eventing here with us at these Asian championships in the last few years. Um, it's, it's interesting how that's still very, very prevalent in, in this region, because if you look back to the, particularly the pre-Second World War, when traveling horses was, was very expensive, you had sometimes the same horse, but very definitely from the likes of the United States of America, the same rider in all three Olympic disciplines at those pre-war games. Yeah, and I think, yeah. They're so close to each other, each discipline, isn't it, really? To, okay, they have to have the dressage to be able to get the show jumping and the eventing as well as. Annie Ho for Hong Kong. Annie is going to score 32.4, and that goes into third place in her own right. Bronze medal position at the moment for Annie, uh, putting uh, teammate Yushuan Su and Tufan Tarabi on their equal score down to fourth. And that is going to put Hong Kong on a score after dressage of 96.7, counting the scores for Patrick Lam, Yushuan Su and Annie Ho. And Patrick, Annie and Yushuan sit in first, third and fourth individually. We'll look at the overall individual leaderboard in just a few minutes' time.
So just standing by for the uh, final score of the day for Kontuot Samran, and that will give us also the team total for Thailand at the moment. So, Bobby, are you are you pleasantly surprised? Yes, I really am. But actually, you know what? I'm always impressed. I always love commentating when it's the eventing dressage because I th I'm so proud and also amazed by how they have all three disciplines and how they achieve all the three disciplines at such a great standard. And I thought every test was presented incredibly well today. And you can also see that they're really working well with their trainers and their home team to achieve what they've achieved today. And I, I, am, I have to admit, I'm very excited about seeing the cross country tomorrow morning. Yep, that's uh, pretty early for us. It's 7 a.m. for the uh, cross country. It's a big old day of sport because we're going to have our uh, opening competition in the show jumping championships as well. All the riders coming in, riding their one round speed to set their championship score for the week and move on then over the next two days into the Nations Cup team championships. And at the end of the day, Bobby's uh, flagship the freestyle in the dressage championships. And we've had some really, really exciting competitions so far in the Prix Saint-Georges for the team medals, the intermediate one yesterday. So it's intermediate level freestyle tomorrow, which is going to include those three tempis and two tempis, the canter pirouettes, and how they string those together, the music they choose. And really, Bobby, if I can just try and put that chip in your mind for a moment, I don't think I could choose the individual medalists tomorrow in the freestyle. I mean, I don't know their freestyles and artistic counts for 50 percent, but they're, they're really close. They are incredibly close. It really is wide open. And I think it's going to very much come down to the horse's behavior, having the music quite loud out there so the riders can hear it and it gives it a more atmosphere. So it's going to be a really tense atmosphere out there as the riders come down into the freestyle. But like you said, the choreography is so important to be able to just pit those other riders. Also very much depends as well on if the judge likes the music. Then, you know, that's a big part of it as well. You've got to be careful of what kind of music you choose to if it suits your horse. If your horse has a slower pace and you want it to be slightly quicker, then you give the illusion by adding a slightly quicker music. So you can be very, very clever on what music you choose to enhance the overall profile of you and your horse. So we have a uh, score now for Kontuot Samran and Ridono Elmi to uh, wrap up our day here. And Kontuot Samran and Ridono Elmi are in fact going to be the late takeover of the leading position. Kontuot and Ridano on 30.4. Patrick Lamb and Jockey Club Weronik, long-time leaders right from the get-go, down to second after dressage with Mint Chavanot and Czar of her dreams in third. Anyho, lost in translation fourth, equal fifth then for Yushuan Su and Tufan Tarabi. It is Prisha Kunjan, Thomas Heffernan Ho and uh, Wirpat Pita Kananda and Luminous for Thailand who wrap up our leaderboard of nine on 39.0. Well, uh, catching up uh, with uh, our uh, athletes out in the infield, it is Sarah Rippon. Well, Patrick Lamb was leading from the front, but uh, we have a new leader, Nuts. You must be absolutely delighted. Yeah, I'm so happy with the, what we did. And he didn't compete for a long time, and he's quite happy to come back for, in the ring. And um, what does it feel like to be out there competing for your country in that arena? I'm very proud because it's the first ever event, this big event in Thailand, and I'm so proud and happy to be the part of it. Well, really well done. And back to Bobby and John. We're very happy down here. So that final score then, it really changes things in our competition because right the way through Hong Kong, we're, we're in front, we're in front, we're in front. It's going to be 96.7 uh, for them, including Lost in Translation and Annie Ho's score. But actually Thailand, with that thumping good 30.4 from uh, Kontuat Samran and Ridano Elmi, they are going to be on 96.4. So by 0.3 of a penalty, that is not even one second of time penalties tomorrow on cross country because it's 0.4 for a second's worth of time penalties. Thailand lead, but Hong Kong are literally nipping at their heels.
So as we say, looking forward to tomorrow, cross country at 7 a.m. We've got show jumping in the middle of the day as well, and it is dressage freestyle to wrap it up. There now is confirmation of the team standings here after day one of competition in the FEI Asian Championships for eventing Thailand and Hong Kong. It is nothing really between them. Point three of a penalty for the top two spots and the top two steps of the forthcoming podium in the eventing championships. Thanks so much for joining our broadcast today. Our thanks to uh, the Thai Equestrian Federation for making these Asian championships possible and to our host broadcaster for their fantastic coverage over the course of today's competition. My thanks to Bobby Haler for being alongside me for today's eventing as well. From all of us here in Pattaya and me, John Kyle, it's goodbye for now.